All right, so welcome back to the Blocks Quilt Video Quilt Along. In this one, we're gonna talk a little bit about design placement of these really fun blocks. Here I have my design wall, and from my design wall, you can see there's a bunch of threads on it. I use it all the time, and all this is is a piece of some inexpensive polyester batting, and I just push pinned it right into the drywall. This is my studio, this is where I pin stuff up, and that was just a quick and easy way for me to do it, and it works for me. Once you have all 20 of your blocks uh, pieced together, if your seam allowance was consistent, then you know that they should all measure 13 and a half inches square. If they don't, or you're kind of a little inconsistent here and there, go ahead and take some time out to measure them all out, find whatever the smallest block is, and then trim the other ones down to size, because you do want to have a collection here or a stack of 20 blocks that are pretty much identical in size. That's going to make for easier sewing for you when we piece together all the blocks to create the blocks quilt top. So for right now, I'm just going to start putting blocks up on the design wall. And this is a great way to figure out the placement of your design and how exactly you want the blocks to look, which one next to which one, and things like that. Now if you notice, this is in the same order that I sewed them together. So obviously I would not put these in the quilt design like this because they're all the same. These two are actually identical and then the rest of them just feature the plantains print in all of them. So that's definitely not how I want it to look. If you want, go ahead and reference the overall design sheet uh, that I included for you and just kind of go block by block lining up the same one in the exact orientation that I have. But I just want you to get kind of used to having a design while playing around with the blocks. And a fun way to do it, especially for having a design wall up and on an actual wall versus laying out the blocks on a table, is that you can stand back and look at the entire overall design and say, hey, these two are kind of close in color or they're a little too similar. I want to swap one of these out to another position. Now right here I can see, aside from these having the exact same print on the inside, the fabrics on the outer portion of the blocks are all the same. Gray, 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 gray. That's definitely not going to, or at least for me, that's not how I want my quilt to look. Another helpful little tip is that once you start playing around with the blocks and deciding on the, the overall design of the quilt top, stand back and actually snap a picture with your phone. When you look at it on the phone screen, you'll be able to see the overall view and it's kind of like the same idea of stepping back away from the design wall and you can tell a little bit better if the overall design and the way that you've laid out the blocks, if it's pleasing to your eye. So when you have your blocks up on the design wall, you can then start swapping them around and playing around with the overall composition of the quilt design uh, before you start to piece all these blocks together. You can always reference the sheet that I've included for you in the description box below if you want to make the exact same blocks quilt that I created here. One thing that I want you to note is that the 20 blocks that we have here in this quilt, I've oriented them so they're kind of are laid out in a grid of four blocks by five. Okay, so you're going to get a more rectangular quilt. It's a little longer than it is uh, wide, right? So for that, if that is the orientation that you want the quilt to be held in or like when it's being used, then be mindful of any directional prints. And most of mine are not really directional prints. They don't have text on them that you have to read or anything. The floral kind of goes all over the place. The same with the guava and that plantain block. The one print that is directional is the little casitas or the house print because they're all kind of in a more linear design. So it is a directional design. And so if you want the quilt to hang vertically, I would have to basically turn this block this way. If when the quilt is hanging upright, I want it to be this way, I want uh, you know the view of the quilt of this specific directional fabric to be oriented so that you are reading the print correctly, okay? So keep that in mind as well. None of the others are really affected except for the house print because it is, again, a directional print. Okay, so I'm going to play around with these blocks and I'm just going to go ahead and line them up exactly how I designed the blocks quilt to be. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then we'll jump into piecing all the blocks together to create the finished quilt top. Alright, so 
I am done placing the blocks where I want them to be. And if you notice what I did, I removed that last row here and instead put it down at the bottom. For me, it's easier to visually see the quilt hanging the exact same way I want it to hang once it's completed. So again, four blocks across the top by five blocks down. You probably on camera cannot see all of the blocks that I have here, but I went ahead and reoriented the little house print so now they're facing upright in the same way that I want the finished quilt to hang. Another print that you may want to consider kind of just to decide which way you want it to face is the little plus and minus print because they all kind of flow in one direction. So whether you want them to kind of be going up and down or side to side is up to you. Just pick that. I have one going up and down and one going side to side, okay? So it's a matter of personal preference. It's not really going to make a difference in the overall quilt design. Just the house print is going to be the, the main directional fabric to keep an eye out for. Now because I have my blocks up on my design wall, it's pretty easy to kind of just grab one at a time, piece them together, come back to the design wall, place them again, and that way I can kind of keep track of where exactly each block is getting uh, sewn into so that I don't mess it up or end up with two of the same blocks, uh, two of the same outer fabrics here touching each other or anything. So decide on the overall design first and then I can start grabbing two at a time and heading over to the sewing machine to piece them together. Because all of these blocks are identical, you are going to have several different intersections to match up. Now, don't try to be a, a over-the-top perfectionist when you're putting this together, especially if you're a beginner. Just have fun with it. Do your best. You know, try to cut consistently. Try to piece consistently. And then just give it a good press and try and make sure that they all measure about the same size. So I personally am going to basically piece this together in two separate chunks where I minimize the amount of intersections that I have to do in one straight sewing pass. So the way I'm going to sew them together is basically going to be these two blocks, these two blocks, these two, these two. Okay, then I'll sew these together and I'll end up piecing this entire top section together that's made up of eight blocks. Okay, then I'll do the same thing here at the bottom, kind of two at a time so I can uh, keep an eye on the intersections. The less intersections you have to match up at a time, the more time you can spend on trying to match each one so that it's precisely pieced. So two, 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 two. I'll piece these all together into chunks of six, these six blocks, these six blocks, then sew them together. So I'd have one big block made up of eight blocks, and then I have one big block here made up of 12 blocks. And then I would just piece these two halves together along this shorter dimension of the quilt, which would only require one, two, and three intersection matches at the end. Okay, so that's basically what I'm going to do. It's going to take a little while. So I'll start grabbing my blocks and I'll meet you back here once the entire quilt top is pieced together. All right, so here is the finished quilt top. I think it looks great. Remember, this quilt finishes about 52 inches across this way by 65 down. If you've oriented the blocks the same way that I did, in a grid, that's four blocks by five for the complete 20. So my finished blocks quilt design is the exact same one that I've included for you in the description box below in the diagram sheet here with the illustration of the fabrics and the blocks. Now, once you have the quilt top completed, it's going to be really personal preference on how exactly you finish off your quilt. Now, a proper quilt is going to have three layers that make up what we call a quilt sandwich. The quilt top is the top layer. In the middle, we have batting, which is kind of that soft fluff that goes in the middle that adds more kind of weight to the quilt and also some warmth, right? So that's the batting that goes in between. And then we put backing, which is just another layer of either one solid piece or it could be pieced uh, together different chunks of fabrics for the backing. So those are the three layers to create your quilt sandwich. From there, it's gonna be up to you on how you quilt it. You can do hand quilting, you can quilt it on your domestic sewing machine like free motion quilting. You can even just do some basic straight line or even slightly wavy lines with a walking foot on your domestic sewing machine. I have a long arm quilting machine and that is how I'm gonna quilt mine. So I'll show you some footage too of how that works in case uh, some of you are not familiar with long arm quilting machines. They're quite fun. 
Now once your quilt top is complete and you get ready to go to the finishing steps, right, attaching or adding batting to the back of the quilt top and then the backing fabric, so then you can decide on whatever technique you'll be using to quilt it, it's always a good idea to measure the quilt top. Even if you're following a pattern like we are here, this quilt has been designed to measure 52 inches across this way by 65. Now I know myself and I tend to sew a really scant quarter inch, which is a really narrower uh, a seam allowance than a proper quarter inch. So I typically end up with blocks that are bigger than what they're supposed to be and that's just the way that I sew. So this should measure 52 inches across and I can almost guarantee it's going to be bigger. So it's always best to measure and that way you can have a proper uh, number so that you can then better estimate how much batting and backing you'll need. And you can see I'm a full inch bigger. So my quilt measures 53 inches across and then top to bottom same thing one inch bigger so instead of 52 by 65 mine measures 53 by 66 so yours might be a little bit smaller or like mine a little bit bigger so from that then you want to add at least a couple of inches of batting bigger than your quilt top around the sides. If you're sending your quilt top to a long armor, make sure that you check with them for their requirements. Oftentimes, uh, long armors that quilt for customers will require specific sizes or specific um, increments of inches that they want for the batting and the backing. So some long armors will tell you the batting has to be five or 10 inches bigger on all four sides than the quilt top, and then the same for the backing fabric. I'm gonna load this quilt on my long arm quilting frame and so I know that my backing fabric definitely needs to measure at least a couple inches bigger on either side here, but the top and the bottom, which is how I load it onto my frame, needs to be at least 20 inches longer. So depending on how you're going to quilt your quilt, that's gonna be up to you to figure out the proper dimensions of your batting and backing. Now if you're gonna hand quilt it, you won't necessarily need that much. You still do wanna end up with more batting and backing than the quilt top. That way you will, won't will run into the problem of having any of the other layers be shorter than the quilt top or smaller, and you can just trim away any excess after you're done quilting it. Now if you're looking at this quilt and you're thinking, I don't need a quilt that big, or maybe you want a quilt that's bigger, remember, all these 20 blocks are are identical in size and dimensions. The only thing that we've played around with here are the different prints from my Dominicana collection. If you wanted to make a baby quilt, you can make it so that it's just four blocks by three and it would be up to here. I think that would make a nice size baby quilt and I think you can whip that up in just a couple of hours, okay? If you wanted a bigger quilt, just make more blocks than the 20 that we created here. I kinda like to design just lap size quilts because I find that you can jump right into the project, crank it out relatively quickly and easily and um, move on to your next project, okay? So I'm gonna get this loaded up onto my long arm quilting frame. I'll show you a little bit about how I quilt it. And then after that, all you have left to do is to make and attach your quilt binding. So I have my quilt on my frame here and I'm just going to quilt, it's kind of a, a basic design, it's an overall meander or like a snake stitch or a stippling, kind of just like this and I just guide the machine and just weave it in and out. But to add kind of a little bit more of interest to that overall basic design, every once in a while I'm going to do a swirl. So I'll come in and come out, meander again, do a little swirl come out and when I get out of that swirl I'll just keep meandering so I'm not very good at talking and quilting at the same time but let's try it and see what we end up with so I like to stitch on manual mode meaning I don't have my stitch regulator on I feel like I have more control but it's of course personal preference if you have a long arm yourself and I'm just gonna start stitching now I like to stitch with the machine going a little bit faster so I'll do a swirl here and then go right back into the meander. All right, 
So I lowered the light on here, so hopefully y'all can see a little bit more. But I'm going to come down just along here so I'm not in the actual quilt yet. And then I'll start again and come back up this way with my meanders. Swirl here, why not? Meander my way up and around here. swirl right here and I'm just doing this as I go I don't really know what I'm gonna do until I do it and that's just the way that I prefer to quilt <laughs> And that is it. I hope that you enjoyed this last installment in my Blocks Quilt Along video series. I definitely hope that you will get your hands on some Dominicana fabric and that you will give this easy and beginner friendly quilt a try. Thanks again for watching this video. Remember to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!